Hey brothers and sisters, Francis Santeros here just uh, bringing a word today. So I um, I didn't fare as bad as I thought I was going to. I actually only had uh, a few people that railed against me. I, I kind of thought it was going to be most. Um, the one person that really did come out against me, that actually did a video about it, he's like, I got to come out and speak against a brother. He's talking about... And he names me by name. He says, he's talking about you can receive your, you can only receive your salvation by works. Like, dude, did you not listen to the video? <laughs> I spent the first 20 minutes setting up saying you can't earn your salvation. That you can't work your way to salvation. Nobody's going to earn their salvation by works. Oh my gosh. It's like, you don't, the, the community, I guess, is just so indoctrinated with their doctrine. <laughs> Funny that they they can't even they don't even hear anything else it's like all they have is their doctrine and they don't have enough sense to open up their their eyes their spiritual eyes to see that works and obedience are two different things you can't earn your salvation and obedience isn't earning anything it's not doing you're you're not sinning willfully you know i think i think the key word that that was used is when Jesus says, go away you workers of iniquity, or you who practice lawlessness. That word workers or practice means to, really it's to do that, it's to work or practice at something. Like if you practice playing piano, you're doing it every day, all the time. <laughs> you're doing this thing every day, all the time. And you're doing it, and what I saw was this attitude, it was an arrogant very satanic because it's a prideful arrogant attitude which it's an attitude of i can do whatever i want i'm covered by grace it's that arrogant attitude and they just go on sinning thinking that they can do anything they want that's what i saw that's what it was not that you know look we all sin <laughs> Everybody sins. You know, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar, and the truth is not in you. That wasn't what. That's not what Jesus is talking about. It's not. It's that. It's the specific once saved, always saved attitude of I can do anything I want to do, and I'm covered by grace. But it was a very arrogant spirit that I saw, and that's a demonic spirit. It's a prideful, arrogant spirit. That's what Satan had, and that's the deception. The, the deception is, it's the satanic spirit of, you can do anything you want to do, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's covered by grace. And remember what Paul said, when you are not walking in the spirit, you're walking in the flesh. All right? And when you're walking in the spirit, you're covered by grace. You're not, he says, you're not under the law. But when you're walking in the flesh, you are then. You move out from under grace, and you move under the law. You moved yourself there. That, that was your choice. You chose to do that with that arrogant, prideful attitude of, I can do anything I want to do. That once saved, always saved doctrine is dangerous. It's a dangerous doctrine. And again, I'm going to finish, and I'm going to want to talk about it anymore because I'm actually going to go back to the altar of love here. I'm going to finish with this. Here's the thing. I always like to look at it this way. What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if the once saved, always saved doctrine is wrong and millions and millions and millions of people are told, go away from me, you workers of iniquity, because I didn't know you. And see, you know, that's not a good outcome. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, and everybody's covered by grace, then it doesn't matter. We're all going in. whoop de doo But if he's wrong, everybody that thinks they're saved and, and isn't, because they have that once saved, always saved attitude, you got millions of people going to hell. But if I'm right, then I'm leading people back to Jesus, away from sin? How's that how's that bad? How's that bad? You know, how's that bad? On on look, if I'm wrong, great. We all get in. But if I'm right, many people who were heading to hell now got awakening. You know, look, what does Jesus say in, in Revelation 2 and 3? He says, come back to your first love. Stop doing those things that you're doing. Turn around, repent, come back. He's talking to seven churches. These aren't unsaved people. These are people that knew Jesus. He says, I knew you. 
I remember you. I saw your good works. I saw what you did. I understood you. I knew you. He says, I knew you. He had a relationship with them. So, anyway. I don't know. I can't, I, I, I can't complain. I, I thought I was going to get a lot worse, so I'm not complaining. I just, you know, I, you know, just don't lie about me. You know, don't say that I'm saying that your salvation comes from works because I'm not saying that at all. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't do that at all. Jehovah Witnesses are in for a rude awakening. I can tell you that much. They are because they think that they can earn their salvation. Not only that, their doctrine's all screwed up, but we won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there at all. So um, we're going to do a little bit more on authority. I'm going to go back in through the altar. Uh, I'm not doing identity right now because I kind of hammered identity pretty good. I did two different videos on it. When you combine the two together, they really speak for, for you know, it speaks for itself. But let's go back into authority here. Um, this is something that God's given me some new revelation on. Man, I got to tell you, I've been teaching on authority forever, and I really thought I knew the subject. And when I take everything that I've learned in the last two months, it dwarfs what I knew for the past 26 years. I mean, it just dwarfs it. See, this thing called authority is is powerful. In Genesis 1:28, uh, God has has made the earth, and and He's made man, and now He gives Adam dominion. Okay, dominion is the legal right. It's like um, if you own a house and you rent it out. You know, you've you've given that lease over to that person. You may be the owner, but if let's say you know, because the owner is responsible for fixing. So let's say the hot water heater goes out, and you go there to fix the hot water heater. You can't just walk in the door. You can't. That's still breaking and entering. You can be arrested, even though you're the owner of the house. All right, it's breaking the law. See, when God has given us dominion, He's given us the legal right to manage this thing called the earth. And Paul, or not Paul. David says it in Psalms. He, he, he says just that. He says, you've given us dominion. We'll go over it today. So, so as the owner of the house, you still have to go and knock on the door because that person has the legal right to it, and that's dominion. Dominion and authority are very similar. You know, it's the legal right to manage this thing that God has made, this creation of his. So when Adam sins, he hands it that authority over to Satan. Now, this thing called authority is so huge, it's so vast, it's so powerful that Satan, who's had it now for 4,000 years, has now got Jesus on the edge of the mountain and he's saying, look out at all the kingdoms. I have authority over all of it. I have the dominion. Jesus doesn't argue with him. He doesn't go, oh no, God owns everything. Yeah, he knows God owns everything, but he understands that everything was handed into handed from Adam to Satan and is now under his authority. And then Satan uses these exact words. He says, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give the authority to you. Now, I don't believe he ever intended to give up authority because he understood how valuable it was. This thing called authority is supernaturally powerful, the likes of which uh, no one's ever really considered. And that's what God showed me in this is the power of this thing called authority that it is a power that is so vast, so huge, so great that we can't even comprehend it. And um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, uh, I want you to remember this verse. I want you to keep it in your minds, this next one. It's in Philippians 2.10. It says, God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed upon him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those who are in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. So every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. Now the word, when it says to bow, that means to submit or to acquiesce to one's authority. So every name must acquiesce to the authority of Jesus. Every name. Every name. Above the earth, that's all of heaven, all the angels and, and, and magistrates, uh, on the earth, all humans, and under the earth, that's all spiritual powers. That's Satan and all the demons. They must. They don't have a choice because it's now been given into Jesus' hand when he took the cross back. When he took the cross and he died, he took back authority. He then became the authority. He took back from Satan what Satan had for 4,000 years. And you have to understand, this thing called authority was huge. 
it was it was huge it was again i'm telling you and i'm going to explain it to you here in a little bit that the power of that this, this authority was so monstrous was so awesome that i don't think satan ever thought he was going to lose it i think that was one of the greatest things of the cross you know um the bible says had he known he would never have he would never have crucified jesus he, he would have never crucified the lord of glory had he known he was going to lose authority oh no way there's no way because that thing called authority was huge it's huge y'all wait till we get into this all right now in luke 10 jesus says behold i have given you authority now that word given is past tense so it's already been done for us. It's not something we're going to get in the future after we receive our glorified bodies. It's, we have it now. We have it now. This thing called authority is ours now. Now, let's describe this thing called authority. I, You know, y'all know I say it all the time that I, I, I teach self-defense for a living. I, that's what I do. All right? That's what I've done. I've done that for a long, 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 long time. And I'm really good at it. I was really good at it. was one of the best in the world in my weight class. And uh, so if I get in a fight with a 90 pound woman, I'm gonna win. I'm, I'm just gonna win. I don't care who she is, I'm gonna beat her. And uh, if I get in a fight with a 90 pound police woman who's got a badge, who's got a gun, and who's got the SWAT team to back her up, who can call in as many resources as she wants, and yeah, she's probably gonna need it because I'll probably whoop her, but when the SWAT team shows up, don't you know, I'm getting arrested. Oh, by the way, she's got the court, she's got the judge, and she's got the jail. She has authority. Okay, when Jesus says, I give you authority, we become the sheriff. We got the badge. We got the gun. We got the SWAT team backing us up. That's all the angels in heaven. All right, we've got everything that we need. We've got the court system. We got the jail and we got the judge. Where, you know, like I did that one Bible study where, where it says, uh, taking every thought into captivity. Uh, to the obedience of Christ, it goes on to talk about how we're the judge, jury, and executioner. That's our that's our authority now to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. We can determine the punishment and everything. Right? This thing called authority is huge, and Jesus now has taken it back and he's given it to us. And he says, "Behold, I give, I have given you authority, the legal right. We have the law behind us now. All right, and, and we don't do it in our own power." In our own flesh, in our natural man, we can't do anything. But he says, I've given you authority. When he says, I've given you, he says, I give it to you in my name. It's in my name that you have it now. Right? So in the name of Jesus, we have this thing called authority. We have the law that backs us up. He says, authority to tread on. Now this word tread is really important. It, it means to step on. And anything that is stepped on... The person that's doing the stepping on is the master of the thing which he steps on. It means to completely dominate that thing. Like uh, uh, if there was a basketball game going on and one team is beating the other team 100 to nothing. It's only halftime. This game is a complete domination. It's not even close. There's no contest. in This other team can't even score one basket. And the other team's got 100 baskets. By the end of this game, it may be 200 or 300 to nothing. All right? That's complete domination. And that's what he's talking about here. When you step on something, when you tread on something, it's to completely master it or to dominate it. So Jesus says, I've given you authority, the legal right to tread on, to master this thing. All right? You understand? We have the legal right to master what? Serpents and scorpions which is a metaphor for Satan and the demon forces. That's all it is. It's just a metaphor talking about the devil and the demon forces. And so we have this legal right to step on, to dominate Satan and the demon forces, right? We dominate them like there's nothing they can do. It says, and over all the power of the enemy. Now, how much is all? All is everything. If we have authority to dominate all the power of the enemy how much power of the enemy does the enemy have over us nothing because we dominate all of it all of it we completely master it so he's got nothing to uh, against us all he has is lies and parlor tricks you know and that was the thing about that if you go back into my my um, playlist 
uh, it's called Spiritual Warfare, and there's a series, a seven-part series called Angels and Demons. When that, when the angel took that spirit out of Thomas's head, he said it was about 12 inches big, and it was almost all the face. You know, it was the, the head was about this big. It had little tiny arms and little tiny legs just flailing around like this, and all it did was lie. It is big mouth just spewing vulgarity and lies. That's all it had. Jesus, there is no such thing as Jesus. You're believing in a in a falsity, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it just was cussed and cussed and cussed and lied. It, he said all it had was lies. See, that? it's all it's got. It, it, that's all he has now. He doesn't have anything on us. All he can do is lie. So it comes down to, you know, it, it, when you when you look at the way Jesus walked around in such confidence and understanding, see, he understood his identity. He knew he was the child of God. He knew what the Word of God said about him. So when the lies came, when Satan took him into the desert and tempted him three times and lied to him, he didn't fall for it. He didn't believe the lies. You know, the Bible says, whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. You know, you when you get to that place, that's that's why Paul was so much like Jesus, because he understood his identity. He realized, he recognized he was a child of God. He was an heir to the throne. He seated in heavenly places. And then when he got his authority, he was like, boom, he put the two together. Identity and authority makes for a very powerful uh, a weapon that Satan can't, he, what does it say here? He says over all the power. Satan's got nothing. The power that he has is just all, it's it's just lies and deception. It's sleight of hand. It's tricks. It's, you know, it's nothing. So um, he says, behold, I have given you authority, the legal right to tread on, to dominate serpents and scorpions, Satan and demon forces, and over all, not some, all the power of the enemy. And the part that really got me was, and nothing shall hurt you. Now the Bible doesn't lie, and it doesn't exaggerate. I'm getting warm here. I, whenever I start uh, preaching, I start to get real hot. I wonder why, I wonder why. All right, the Bible doesn't lie, and it doesn't exaggerate. God never exaggerates in the Word. So if he says, and nothing shall hurt you, what does that mean? I mean, stop and pause and think for a second. If Jesus is saying, hey, nothing can hurt you, look, he never came back to the disciples later and go, went, you know, guys, I kind of misspoke. Didn't really mean to say that. Some things can actually hurt you. Uh, be, you know, should be careful about this. Watch out for that. You know, nah, 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 nah. he didn't do that. Absolutely not. If Jesus, if Jesus said, and nothing can hurt you because of this thing called authority, guess what, guys? Nothing can hurt us. And I want you to think about that. Nothing can hurt you. Those of you people that are targeted individuals, nothing can hurt you. And I don't dispute that. I I understand that people are targeted. You know, it's funny because um, when I started doing this thing called the altar of love, I do these cases and people call me up. And, and this one woman, the first woman, a couple of months ago, she said, have you ever heard of a targeted individual? And I said, yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't, I don't know anybody that was. And she began to run down this case to me, uh, this, these things that were happening to her. And, you know, I mean, it was indisputable. If she wasn't lying to me, it was indisputable. And when we took her through the altar of love, she was delivered of all of it. And she's been delivered of it ever since. Well, after her, there was another case. There was another case. There was another case. And all of these people were targeted individuals. All right? And everybody that I know of has been delivered. Now, there's a couple of people that are, that are nagged by a few different things. But and we'll get into why that is in a little bit. What's happening, uh, it, it all has to do with authority. But we'll, we'll talk about that some more. So, this thing called authority is strong enough to overcome anything. Because nothing can hurt you. Nothing. Nothing they do. No 5G. They, none of this stuff they're dropping on us in the chemtrails, none of it can hurt us. You take authority over that stuff in the name of Jesus, you bind it in the name of Jesus and, 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 and all of its effects, and you lose healing and restoration to your body, nothing can hurt you. That's the thing. That, see, what he was showing me about this was how awesome this thing called authority was. And this is how he showed it to me. He said, I want you to see yourself like Superman in a world without kryptonite. 
Now, those of you that have done a couple of my webinars with me the last couple, we've, we've gone over a lot of this material. Hopefully, I'll bring it in from a different angle so you see it in a different way. Maybe it'll enlighten you a little more. Maybe you'll get, get a hold of it better because I, I know not everybody's getting it by some of the responses that I get. They're, they're going, yeah, yeah, got that, love that, love that, yeah, but. But means it just discounted everything you said about what you thought you understood. Because Jesus didn't have any reservations about who he was. He didn't walk around going, oh, you know, uh, unsure of himself or intimidated by, no, neither did Paul. You know, when, when Paul got shipwrecked that time and he, he reached in the, in the bush for something, I don't even know what he was doing in the bush, and a poisonous snake latched onto him and bit him, the Bible says Paul just shook it off. And he went back and sat down. And he didn't go back down, sit down and go, Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray that thing doesn't kill me or doesn't hurt me. You know, He didn't even do that. He didn't do anything. He did nothing. Why? Because nothing can hurt him. He knew in his head, he probably thought, well, you know what? If by gosh, if that thing was poisonous and, and, God's, and, and I'm going to die, then my father probably wants to take me home. But, uh, you know, nothing can hurt me, so really it doesn't have any effect over me. And everybody sat around waiting for him to die. What, they just were anxious. They were just were wondering, you know, how long is it going to be before he dies? And when they realized a little while later that it had no effect on him, they were like, dude, you must be a god. <laughs> Why? Why did they think he was a god? Because that was a poisonous snake and it would have killed any normal human being. But Paul wasn't just a normal human being anymore. He was like Superman now. And that's this thing called authority. That's why Satan was so angry when he realized that he lost it. Because he realized we now move to a place that he once had. To a superpower like a superhero that he once held. And now has lost. And he lost everything when he lost authority all right he said i want you to see yourself god said i want you to see yourself like superman in a world without kryptonite now superman's walking across the street and a tra semi tractor trailer truck is bearing down at him it's about to hit him it's just about to hit him it's going 100 miles an hour and the only thought in superman's mind is oh my gosh that poor driver he's going to get hurt so bad because he's not worried about a thing all right? There's nothing that can hurt Superman in a world without kryptonite. And I think God used Superman because in, in everybody's mind, who can, who, there's, I don't think there's anybody on earth, based, unless you, you know, you live in some tent somewhere in, in, you know, in off, like a pygmy or something, you've never seen anything, but everybody can understand Superman. Everybody can, can relate to Superman in a world without kryptonite. He's impervious to everything. All right. So, and he said, I want you to see Satan like Batman. So there's Superman and Batman. They're faced off. Now, in a world without kryptonite, Superman, if he punches Batman, Batman's going to fly around the world. If Batman punches Superman, it's going to be like hitting a steel wall. You know, all Batman's got is fancy gadgets and tricks, and he's got his bat belt with, with bat spray and the bat boomerang, and he's got the bat car and the bat, and, and you know, he's got all this bat stuff, but it's Superman. None of it matters. It's all parlor tricks. It works on everybody else. It'll work on everybody in the world, but it can't work on us when we understand our identity, who we are, we're children of God, heirs to the throne, seated with our Father in heavenly places, and we recognize our authority. Identity and authority, they go hand in hand. These two things together. Jesus knew who he was, and he knew what his authority was. He didn't walk around in fear. Look, if nothing can hurt, hurt you, what are you afraid of? Nothing. If Superman is walking around on Earth and he knows there is no such thing as kryptonite here, it's only back at his old planet, his old planet exploded, there is no kryptonite, he's not afraid of anything. He's not. He's walking around like Jesus walked. And that's what God showed me. He said, I want you to view yourself like Superman, like Jesus in a world without kryptonite. I want you to see yourself like that because you're supposed to be imitators of Christ. And that's what Paul did. Now stay with me because I want you to understand something. This is not a license to sin, okay? Or to be rude to people because love comes into this. Love is part of the equation. Remember, it's one of the legs of the 
of the altar of love. And love is really important in this, and I'm going to get to it in just a second. So he goes to um, uh, the 12 d disciples, and he's about to send them out. And it says, and it says, and he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons. Now we know that. We just learned that, right? We have authority and power over all the demons. Yeah, fine. But look at this next verse that I never saw before. I never saw it, and I certainly never saw it like this. It says, and to cure diseases. So who has the authority over demons? We do. Now, if we have the authority, God's not going to do it for us. If he's given us the legal right to do something, he's not going to do it for us. He's given us the legal right. We have the legal right. You know, it's like this. You buy a nail salon because they're really profitable. And apparently they're quite profitable. So, you know, I, I don't know. They're, but, you know, maybe you want to do... And then you realize... Um, you really stink at it. You're terrible. The nails never turn out good. Everybody's complaining. It's not good for business. And not only that, you hated doing nails. You realized that was the, you just, you just regret doing it. That it's so tedious to you. So you, you, you say, you know what? I'm going to hire this out. And you hire yourself this, this little lady who's good at it and likes doing it. And you hire her to be your manager. She's managing your shop. She has all the authority to manage, hire, fire, do all the ordering, everything, because she's the manager. And you just sit around and collect the profits. Great, no problem. And she calls you up and says, hey, uh, we're out of toilet paper. And your response is gonna be, hey, I hired you to manage the business. I pay you a good salary to manage the business. Go get some darn toilet paper. Because if I have to get toilet paper, I don't need you. I don't need you. See, that's authority. We have authority. Our Father is not going to undermine us. Authority is, it's like a spiritual law that God has put into motion. This thing called dominion, this thing called authority. And our Father is not going to undermine us. If he's given us the authority to do it, he's not going to step in and do it out from under us. If he does, he's actually breaking his own law. That's why, if you ever look around, you see Christians that are that are sick and diseased, that are dying, that are broke, busted, disgusted, that are messed up, you know, because, well, there's four things that can steal your authority. And we're going to go over those. And what Satan does is he takes our authority from us and attacks us with it. See, remember, he, he lost this thing called authority. He lost it. He lost it to us. But he's no fool. I guarantee he got with his boys and he, they huddled up and said, whoa, we just got our butts whooped. We got our butts handed to us on a platter. We got to we got, we, we got regroup here. We, we got a plan. Anybody have any ideas when demon speaks up and says, yeah, let's, um, let's go in there and infiltrate their churches and we'll, um, we'll kind of mess up their doctrine about their identity so they don't know they're children of God. So they actually walk around thinking they're servants of God. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. Let's do that. All right, you, you, you four, go, go do that. Hit the churches. Go. And then another guy speaks up and he says, hey, why don't we steal their authority from them? What? That's a great idea. This thing called authority, this superpower, basically, we're like, makes us supermen. Let's take their authority from them. Good idea. You, two, three, four, five, you go. Go and do that. Go steal their superpower from them. And another one says, I got a better idea. Let's hide it. So they don't even know they have authority. Whoa. Whoa. Good idea. Go do that thing. Go into the infiltrate the churches and hide this teaching so nobody knows what their authority is. See, that's what happened, y'all. This thing called identity, this thing called authority, it was hidden from us all this time. For 2,000 years, Satan hid it from us and he used it. See, the thing about authority is it's out there. It's out there for the taking. If we don't assume authority, Satan will. So Satan's just kind of standing around like this going, what are you going to do? What are you going to do in this matter? You going to assume authority or not? It's like the, the seven sons of Sceva. Remember when he asked him, he said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know that you're a child of God? Do you know that you have authority over me? Do you know that you could actually cast me to the pit of hell and, and, and condemn me to be there until God judges everything and sends us to the lake of fire? 
do you know you can do that? Do you know you have the authority to do that? Because, you know, if you don't, I'm, I'm fixing to whoop you. <laughs> I'm fixing to whoop you good. And they didn't know. They didn't know who they were. See, Paul knew who he was. Peter knew who he was. That's why they walked in such power. That's why they walked in authority. This thing called authority, I want you to see it like a super power. It makes you like Wonder Woman or Superman. You know, my daughter, she likes those superhero movies and she took me to that movie just recently. Uh, actually, we watched it on Netflix, I think. Wonder Woman. And man, she's got all this great power and she's in the middle of this war that's going on and she's fighting the Germans and their tank shells coming at her and she's blocking bullets and, you know, throwing things and doing things and just performing all kinds of miracle feats and nothing can hurt her. Nothing can hurt her. She's got this authority power in her that nothing can hurt her. But what if, what if something happened and all of a sudden she lost her superpower and she's in the middle of that fight and she becomes mortal? What would happen to her? She died because the fight is coming on. The enemy's attacking. He's bringing everything to her. As long as she's got her superpower, she's fine. So this is what I'm saying, y'all. We do have this thing called authority. And it is like a superpower. See, nothing can hurt us. We can trample on the demon. We completely dominate him on Satan and the demons. We do. We have this authority. It's spectacular. It's awesome. It's beyond anything you can even wrap your brain around. I've been doing this for a couple months. I've been teaching it for a couple months. And, and every day I teach it, I see it a little clear, more clearly. You know, the, the, the first time I was actually teaching it, I saw the revelation of it coming out to me. It's an awesome thing. It's like a superpower. We're literally like superheroes. I want you to see yourself like that. They could do a movie about a Christian who understood his identity and walked in his authority and it would be like a superhero movie, only it would be a real movie. It would be real life. You could do it about real life, performing all kinds of crazy miracles. You know, the guy Smith Wigglesworth, uh, who, who was reputed to have raised 23 people from the dead. Hello, don't you know Smith knew who he was? And he knew what he was. He knew it. He knew it. He just walked around like Jesus, expecting, because he understood his authority. This thing called authority is huge. And Satan is so angry that he lost it. He's so angry. And he's done everything he knows to do to hide it from us. And he, he'll do everything he, he, he can figure out to steal it from you. So there are four ways you give up this thing called authority. But before we go into that, we're going to go back to this verse and talk about this verse some more. He says, and he called the 12 together and he gave them power and authority over all the demons. And to cure diseases. Who has the power to cure? We do. It's been in us all along. It's part of our superpower. We're the ones that do it. We're the ones. God's not going to do anything that, that he's given us the authority to do. Jesus never walked up to a lame person and said, Oh, Father, in the name, or in my name, or Joe, Father, please heal his blindness. No, because Jesus had the authority. He just spoke to it. When you have authority, you just command that thing. It must obey you. All right. Now, Jesus could do it in his in himself because he's Jesus. We do it in his authority. So we do it in the name of Jesus. So I, it, the, the, the uh, structure will change. It'll be come out of him in the name of Jesus. That's assuming authority. See, if we don't assume it, Satan will. Satan will. This thing called authority is huge. It makes you a superhero, literally a superhero. And nothing can harm you. And everything and anything that goes on in your life, every situation that you get in or get out of, come into, come out of, and you're thinking, well, I'm supposed to be a superhero. Why am I going through this? Because God may be setting you up for a crazy miracle. And the only way it can be a crazy miracle is if the situation gets so bad, you're on the verge of it, and then, boom. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that makes sense. See? At some point, you still have to trust your father because he is sovereign and he gets to do whatever he wants to do. And he's going to do, especially in these last days, he's going to do such marvelous and crazy things that are so eye-opening that 
you'd have to be a fool not to see it. See, he, he's trying to lead people in, back back to him in these last days, and he's going to do it with crazy miracles. I'm, I'm seeing crazy, crazy miracles, the likes of which I've, I've never seen before. The last couple of months, it's 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 just been unbelievable. I, and let me tell you something about the demonic spirits. Uh, I, I'm doing exorcisms now. <laughs> you know, the w one lady, gosh, you, look, there were so many spirits. I know there was no less than 250, but we could have been up around 1,000 for all I know. I mean, the number was, it just kept going on and 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 on. It's like it had no end. <laughs> they just kept coming out and coming out and coming out. Finally, I just told her, I just, I said, just keep saying, come out in the name of Jesus. And she'd say, come out in the name of Jesus. And a scream would come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Scream would come out. And we did this for half an hour. And they just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. You know, we actually did the whole thing for almost two and a half hours. And they were just coming out. They were just coming out. And, and see, it's because they have to obey. We dominate. All right. Now, remember, I told you there's four things that you can do to lose your authority, to give it up. You hand it over, and one of them is if you do nothing. All right, I want you to write this down as a list. What are the four things that I can do to lose my superpower? This thing called authority is like a superpower. One of them is, is uh, if you do nothing. If you do nothing, you can lose your superpower. You, you give it up. You just hand it over to him. You've lost it. All right? Paul says, or I mean, uh, David says, regarding mankind, he says, you made him a little lower than the angels. We talked about this one time before. This word lower means needy. We were made needy. The angels didn't need God. They were all able to leave. You, you know, the, the third of them actually just left. They, had, they, they fell with all the knowledge of wisdom, uh, all, all mechanics, chemistry, biology, physics. They, knew, they fell with all the knowledge of the earth. They, they just, they, they need God. We do. When a man doesn't have God, there's a hole in his heart. That, that's why a lot of people end up committing suicide. Because they don't have Jesus. They've retained all the wealth that they, they can muster. They've got every toy and every gadget, every car, every house, el her helicopters and airplanes. and They're empty. They're empty because they were created to need God. They were made a little lower than the angels. They were made needy. God made us to need him on purpose because he wanted us to need him. He, he, he wanted us. He, he wasn't going to go through what he went through with the angels. He made humans different. We were created differently. We were made needy. We were made a little lower than the angels. All right? He said, and you crowned him with glory and honor. He says, you made him. That, made, that word made is created. We were actually fashioned or created for this specific purpose. This thing that he says next, this is one of the things you made him for. All right? He made us to have children, yes, but to do this thing. What, what is it? To have dominion over the works of his hands. So we were created to dominate this thing that he created, earth. We were created for this. He had children and put us down here so we could rule and reign like Jesus did on this thing called earth that he created. It's like, it's like a, a father that builds a great business and then hands it off to his kids and says, Here, I've, I've built up a dynasty, a fabulous uh, manufacturing company for you. It's successful. It's, it's, it's prosperous. Now, go. Run the family business. That's what dominion is. We're running the family business, guys. We, we are the, the rulers here on earth to dominate. All right? This is our job here. He says, you made him to have dominion over the works of his hands. Everything that God has created, we're made to have dominion. Remember, dominion is the legal right, the right to rule and reign. And then he says, you have put all things. How many is all? We know all is all. All means all. If you if you go and do a, 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 a strong search of the word all, it means all. That's what it means. All things under our feet. Well, we learned what that is. That's We dominate it. We dominate everything everything that's on earth we dominate it that's our job we're not supposed to cower in fear to anything you know when jesus walked up and there was a demon there the bible says that they feared him well you know what they ought to fear us but but uh if, if there's um you know, let's say there's a hotel and maybe a floor is known to be haunted and you know things tip over and noises creak people are cower in fear there well we're christians 
not us. When we walk in that thing, that room, that floor, those things should cower in fear to us. When you start walking in your authority, everything starts to change. Those demonic spirits, if they realize that you know who you are and what you can do to them, that you can cast them to the pit of hell, never to return again, to burn at 10,000 degrees, to be bound in chains, to be ripped limb from limb. Look, you can get you can get as specific as you want on this thing because you have the legal right to. That's just it. We're judge, jury, and executioner. All right? So when they realize that you know who you are and what you have, what authority you have, they're going to shut up. They're not going to speak out. They're not going to be tipping things over. They're not going to be acting up or acting a fool. They're going to just cower in fear to you. See, the roles reverse now because we're the superpower. They're not. They were stripped. They used to have it. They used to walk in it, but not anymore. It's us. We're the ones. We have the superpower because what Jesus did on the cross. Without Jesus, we wouldn't have it. We'd be nothing. And we can do nothing without the name of Jesus. But with the name, we're like superheroes, guys. All right. Then Jesus says in Matthew 18, 18, he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall, shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Binding and loosing. We've talked about this. We're just going to go through it again. To bind is to restrict, to stop, to prevent, to cease and desist something. That something should be stopped. So if there's an attack that's coming against you or a sickness that's coming against you. And, and a great example is um, I, everybody, there was the flu was going around Houston and Everybody in my school was getting it. All my students were getting it. They were getting terrible sick. And when I teach, I mean, you're grabbing hands and putting them in place, and I'm touching kids, and kids are like gross, you know? Their hands are in their mouth. They're all over the place. And you can't teach this thing and not touch people. You interact with people. You know, you're grabbing their legs and molding their bodies and putting their hands up and showing them how to do this. And, all right. You, so, I, you know, and, and you can't, I don't always remember to wash my hands before I go home, or maybe I touch my eye or something. You know, look, it happens. And, and I, I woke up, I was in the middle of teaching this one day, um, about a month into it, and I woke up with this wicked sore throat, and I had just had a mother tell me, yeah, yeah, her son was sick for like a week, and it started with a bad sore throat, and I woke up with a wicked sore throat. Now, I could have said, oh, I got a sore throat, you know, and if somebody close to you says, oh, you sound terrible, what's wrong with you? Oh, I got a sore throat. Look, that's giving up authority. Because as soon as you say it, you receive it. We're going to talk about that. All right. So um, I just, as soon as I woke up and I took a, I swallowed and it was like, ah, oh, it was crazy hurt. I just immediately took authority over it. I said, I bind that in the name of Jesus. Bind means I stop it. I stop it. Stop right now. Cease and desist. And I lose healing upon me right now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, I condemn in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every name that is named must bow to the name of Jesus. Flu, sore throat, symptoms of the flu, I command you to bow. That means right now they have to submit to the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of Jesus and go. Sickness, disease, go. You have no place. I command you to be sent to the pit of hell, never to return again to me. Never. Never. You can never come back to this body again. And I lose health. And I lose healing. And, you know, and I just, at peace, you know, to, to lose something is to allow it. So binding is preventing it or stopping it. And, and so I get up. I grab a cup of coffee. I'm doing my Bible study. I think I even did a case. I worked on a case that morning. By the time I was done with the case, every symptom gone, sore throat gone, everything gone. Why? Because I have authority. I have authority. It didn't have the legal right to stay. See, remember I said there's four ways to give up your authority? Well, the second way is with your words. Remember I told you about that story about my wife when the doctor told her, you're going to die. Your mind line sheath has deteriorated. you got like six months to live. And he was sobbing. He was crying. He was a friend of ours. Hey, look at her, Angela. Huh? I'm so sorry you're going to die. And she just looked at him and she stood up and she goes, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. My father didn't bring me all this way to, have, to leave me here and die. I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm sorry. I got to go. Bye. She walked out. He called her and called her and texted her. And she said, and she so remember I told you, Satan is like 
Batman. All he's got is parlor tricks. She said that all the things he described, he says, your muscles are going to twitch, your nerves are going to start going crazy, everything will start to shut down, and then you'll die. And she said she, when he left there, every muscle in her body was twitching. Her hands were twitching, her fingers were twitching, muscles in her neck and in her face and her eyes, like, 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 wait, like you'll get a little twitch in your eye. She said all over her body. What was that? Parlor tricks, guys. Parlor tricks. To try and get her to say it. See, had she called me up and said, oh my gosh, I just left the doctor's office and he said that my myelin sheath has deteriorated, I'm going to die. Then you have Satan runs up to the throne and says, she said it, I have authority. And authority is given to him to kill her. That's the second way you give up your authority, guys, with your words. First is you do nothing. The second is with your words. The Bible doesn't say, what do we talk about our situation? He said, what do we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he want not with him also freely give us all things? We don't talk about our situation. We speak to it. Why? Because we're an authority. Jesus never walked up to a situation and talked about it. He just walked up to and spoke to it. Blindness, go. Hearing, come. A leper, be healed, be cleansed, he would say. He just spoke to it. We don't talk about our situation. We're not supposed to sit there and dwell on our situation, talking about it, and, you know, going over it with psychologists and psychiatrists, because all we're doing is giving our authority away. Yeah, I've always had a temper, and I always do this, and I react the wrong way. There, All you're doing is giving up your authority. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And it doesn't mean that we're in denial. Here's an example. The doctor calls you up and he says, uh, he says, the report that, that the tests have just come in, you've got cancer. We, d we have found cancer cells in your blood or the biopsy just came back and it was malignant. Now, if you call up your spouse and you say, honey, I've got cancer, you've got cancer. You just gave up your authority to it. It has the legal right to stay within your body. However, if you say, let's say your, your spouse calls you up and says, what were the results? Well, the results came back. The, bi the results of the biopsy came back malignant. Now, that's stating a fact. But in the name of Jesus, I bind that cancer. I bind the malignant uh, tumor. I command it to die in the name of Jesus. I command the root cause to die. It'll have no place, no power, no authority over me in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree whom the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus, I command it to bow to the name. For every name that is named must bow to the name of Jesus. So I command cancer, bow now to the name of Jesus. All right, you've just taken authority over it. You didn't claim it. You can state a fact. The fact is that the tumor was, uh, the biopsy came back diagnosed malignant that's a fact but you're not claiming it that's a completely different thing you're taking authority over it you're speaking to that thing you're commanding it to go and by doing that satan can't go up and take authority then that thing because it's a spirit that was there doesn't have the legal right to stay then when you take authority over that spirit spirit of cancer i command you to go now it's got to go but see, if that thing has the legal right to stay, you can rebuke it, you can bind it, you can do all that stuff till your rebuker's worn out and it doesn't have to go anywhere because it's about authority, y'all. This thing called authority is so valuable. Satan's going to do whatever he can to get it back from you. And there's four ways. Remember, one way is if you do nothing, he assumes it. Well, Your Honor, he did nothing, so I have the legal right to it. Yes, you do. Or, Your Honor, he said it, he claimed it. He, he called cancer on himself. I have the legal right. Yes, you do. All right. Now, I want you to understand something. Does that mean if you've spoken against yourself that you can't reverse it? No, it does not. No, it does not. Absolutely not. Because what he showed me next was this. And it was really cool. As we move into the third leg, the power of your words here, he showed me was this. And this is where the altar of love, what the altar of love taught me. You know, I explained about that case the other day where I had that woman that got delivered of everything except for that one thing in her back that got worse and worse and worse and worse to it. It felt like she had a dagger being stuck in her back. And then once we found out where the authority came from, which was through that Ouija board, see, our actions, that's the third one, our sin 
gives up authority. When we walk in willful sin, for you once saved, always saved people, you give up your authority. You're no longer like Superman. You're no longer like Superman. You hand it over. She had handed over her authority to Satan, who was allowed to put that pain on her. But when she hit her knees, she said, Father, I repent for playing with that Ouija board. Please forgive me. That thing left. I mean, it left immediately. And in the past, what I had learned was once you confess it, once you ask forgiveness for it, once you repent for that thing, then the second thing you do is you take authority over it, you bind it, you cast it out. But what we were doing was we had so destroyed all the other spirits that were in there. Uh, we had had them. We had them ripped to shreds. We had them torn limb from limb, cast to pits where they would burn at ten thousand degrees. That spirit that was there took off before we could bind it because I was going to have it cast to the pit of hell. I was going to have it decapitated, have its tongue ripped out, uh, and before I could do any of it, it just took off. It was like, whoa, man, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, I, I want to live to see another day. See, that thing got smart. It watched what happened to all of his other colleagues. You know, you got to understand, man, when those spirits ended up in hell and Satan's going, what are you guys doing here? I, I assigned you against, uh, I forget what her name was. Uh, I, I assigned you against that woman. You you're supposed to be up there. And they're like, no, no, well, you don't know what she did to us. She, she, she bound us. She had us ripped limb from limb. Look at, I got no arms. Look at me. And look, I'm, I'm being sent down to this pit. I got, I'll never get out again. And Satan's going to go, you know, he's going to tell a couple more, go, 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 you go get her. Let's see if she really understands this thing called authority. He'll take some a little more power, a little more cunning. You know, I had one woman that I, that I, um, I, I did it, her case. And she said for the, the next, she got delivered of everything, but the next day she felt the attack coming on, but she took authority over all of them, every attack that came on. And the next day there were some more attacks, not quite as many, but she took authority over those. Boom, boom, boom. She just, she's like, oh, no, 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 no. You, you cannot stay here, you know? And the next day, uh, she had a couple more attacks, but nowhere near as many. And she was like, absolutely not. I take authority over you. I bind you and cast you out. And by the fourth day, there were no more attacks because they finally realized, oh, this woman gets it. <laughs> she knows who she is. She's not giving up. This ain't just a fad for her. See, God will even allow that stuff. Maybe there are a couple ailments that stay on you. Why? So you continue to speak to him. So you keep practicing this. You know, Jesus called us practitioners of lawlessness. We, we need to be practitioners of faithfulness. All right. We need to work this thing. You want to get good at something? You got to practice it. You want to get a, a better understanding of authority? You got to start doing it. You know, where, where I am uh, grateful is that I actually have been doing these cases, so I've had to do it. I've been doing it two, three times a day. I've been taking authority, and, and it's made me, oh, man, it's refined my superpower. It is refined. You know, you know uh, where was it? In, in one of those X-Men things, when, when those people realize that they have a superpower, but they don't know how to control it yet, and they're all over the place. You know, guys got laser beams for eyes, and they're just burning up everything all over the place because they don't know how to control it. It's kind of like that. It takes a little practice. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta figure this thing out, but it doesn't happen unless you exercise it. And that won't happen unless you're put up against something. So don't be moan or be grudge this thing you're coming up against. It's an opportunity for you to practice this thing called authority. Now, this video's running long. I know it. I know it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to finish it up tomorrow with, with words. That's authority. Y'all are supermen. We're supermen. We're like superheroes. We have this thing called authority. Remember, there's four things that can steal your authority. We've covered three. Number one of them, number one is if you do nothing. Number two is if you walk in willful sin. If you walk in willful sin, you open the door for that spirit to go up to heaven and say, Father, she did this or he did that. Yes, you have authority. And that thing can enter you. It can. And it can wreak havoc in your life until you take, until you repent for it, confess it, and then kick it out. All right? You, you, you can bind against that thing. You can rebuke it all day long. But if you haven't, if you haven't repented for it, truly repented for it, and, you know, Jesus didn't say to that woman, he didn't say, you know, go, and when you sin, repent again. He didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. You, we are expected not to walk in willful sin. And I want you to, I want you to see it like this. The next time you consider this thing called sin, the next time you consider doing something 
that could lose your superpower. I want you to think about it like this. Is it worth losing my authority? Is it worth giving up my superpower? You know, is, is having an affair, you know, you're presented with this opportunity to have an affair and your spouse will never know. You're out of town. It's just a perfect situation. It's too good to resist. Is having this affair worth giving up your superpower? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. With this thing called authority is so huge, Satan is going to do just about anything to steal it from you. He will tempt you in every way possible because he knows. He knows how important it is. He knows how valuable it is. He will try and do anything to deceive you. If you do nothing, you give it up. If you sin, you give it up. And with your words, you can give it up. Remember, I told you what, what the Father told me that day. He said the power that the devil has is the power you give him by the words that you speak. Why? Because we give up our authority. That's his power. He takes our authority from us in the power. It just fits perfect with what he told me. It fits perfect. It absolutely fits perfect. How these things come together and they weave in. And then later on, he adds another piece to the puzzle that just all, all of a sudden presents the picture. We're like supermen. Literally. We walk around just like Jesus. Just like Paul. Because we understand who we are and what we have at our disposal. Authority. Don't ever give up your authority when you consider how valuable this thing is when you consider how powerful it is and when you consider what will happen to you when you give it away it makes you not want to do anything wrong anymore it makes you want to you know walk as righteously as possible i mean look none of us are perfect we're going to lose our temper or say something that we shouldn't say but the thing about it is you repent quickly immediately whoa 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 ah no father forgive father please forgive me please forgive me ah, that was wrong i shouldn't have done that i repent in the name of jesus i bind that thing i bind that thing you'll have no place no power no authority over me in the name of jesus I command you to go you cannot have my authority you know, you, you, it, it starts changing things for you, man. I, I'm telling you, it, this thing called the altar of love, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And it was in the altar of love that God showed me, showed me how dangerous it is to have an attitude of once saved, always saved, and just go on sinning and doing whatever you want to do because we're covered by grace. How dangerous that was. It, it, if not even for the chance of internal damnation just by the mere fact that you're giving up your authority and Satan will destroy you with it he will because that's his goal he hates us because we have the authority that he once had he hates us so y'all I'm going to end it up there I just want to say thanks to all you guys who, who didn't ditch me after the last video. I, I know it was, wasn't popular, but here's the thing. Look, remember, when he said workers of iniquity, these are people that plot and plan and, and their whole being is about doing evil, thinking that they're covered by this thing called grace and they can do whatever they want to do. That's, that's not casual sin or you know it's not just a you know making a mistake or you know that's that's not the same thing that's not the same thing that's not what i'm saying and and nobody can earn their salvation it's impossible it's impossible we're saved by grace through faith in jesus what he did on the cross is enough for all of us but we are expected to walk righteously you know, all through the, the New Testament, Paul was talking to him and he'd, he'd refer to times, he goes, remember when you once walked like this in the darkness of your mind, but you don't walk like that anymore. He just expected them not to do, not to live like that anymore. They were expected to walk righteously. They were never told, oh yeah, do whatever you want to do. You know, go, go, go back to the Corinthians and have sex in the temples with, with all the prostitutes. That's okay. You're covered by grace now. It wasn't like that. It was never like that. Once they got saved, they were expected to come out of that. They were expected to leave that. Remember that guy that had the affair with, with I don't know, somebody, and the Paul said, kick him out of the church. That's it. Let him go to Satan. Let Satan have him. And if he repents, take him back. 
that's that's it and just repent and come back just come back it stop stop that behavior don't give up your superpower it's not worth it nothing is when you finally recognize who you are and what you are and what you have at your disposal nothing is worth giving up this superpower all right guys i'm going to say i love you that's all i want to talk about today you're superman the devil's batman he's got nothing on you don't give up that superpower. Bye, guys.